ہاں جی السلام علیکم جی لیٹ اس اسٹارٹ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از دی ٹویلتھ لیکچر ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس اے نیو آرٹیکل دی آرٹیکل فار ٹوڈے از کالڈ بائی پولر جنکشن ٹرانزسٹرز اینڈ دی سلائڈس ہیو بین پرپیئرڈ فرام آور ٹو ٹیکسٹ بکس وی کین فائنڈ دی ڈسکشن آن بائی پولر جنکشن ٹرانزسٹرز ان چیپٹر نمبر تھری of our first textbook and also from chapter number four in the second textbook. So these two textbooks that you see on the screen are the chapters that I have included in my slides, right? The contents for this chapter include, first is introduction. In this section, we will discuss or we will learn the history of the bipolar junction transistor. And then in the second section, that is the transistor construction. We will discuss the physical construction of the BJT or the bipolar junction transistor construction. Then in the third section, we will discuss the transistor operation, how a transistor operates, how a transistor controls the collector current. Then in the fourth section, we will discuss the characteristics of BJTs. That is the characteristics of bipolar junction transistors. These characteristics, they include the base characteristics. The base characteristics are, are also called the input characteristics. And then secondly, we will discuss the collector characteristics of the BJT and also The collector characteristics are also called the uh, output characteristics. So these are the four contents that we, will, that we will be doing in this chapter. So these are the four sections that we will be covering in this chapter. Then comes the chapter objectives. At the end of the chapter, we must have enough education to become familiar with the basic construction and operation of the bipolar junction transistor. This is our first objective. Then the second objective is to be able to identify the three terminals of BJT. And then the third objective is to recognize and be able to explain the characteristics of an NPN or PNP transistor. We will see what is NPN and what is PNP. And our fourth objective is to become familiar with the important parameters that define the response of your transistors. That is, we would like to learn what is alpha and what is beta. So these are our four objectives of this chapter. Okay, so let us start with section number one. Section number one is the introduction and The transistor, it was invented by three scientists. These three inventors or these three scientists were John Bardeen, Walter Barton and William Shockley. Uh, John Bardeen, Walter Barton and William Shockley invented the first working transistor at Bell Labs in 1947. Bell Labs was the Uh, commercial company where these three scientists they worked and they invented the working transistor at Bell Labs in 1947. Further onwards, Shockley introduced the improved bipolar junction transistor BJT in 1948. So Shockley came up with an improved version of bipolar junction transistor in 1948 and this bi bipolar junction transistor entered production in early 1950s and led to the first widespread use of transistors and in this uh, picture the picture above shows the first transistor invented along with the inventors and if we look closely over here this is the the practical BJT that was invented by the three scientists. 
Uh, most common applications of transistors include general electronics, cell phones, our mobile phones, computers, TVs, and much, much more. Okay, so now we come to the next slide. In this slide, we will present, uh, we will see what is a transistor. The bipolar junction transistor is a semiconductor device that controls the collector current with the help of adjusting the base current. This is the basic definition of BJT only. We have two types of transistors, the bipolar junction transistor and the field effect transistor. We will discuss the field effect transistor in a later lecture, but the definition of bipolar junction transistor is, it is a semiconductor that controls the collector current with the help of adjusting the base current. So in a BJT transistor, the collector current is dependent on the base current. The word, the word transistor or the name transistor is given by the short name of transfer resistor. That is, it is the transfer of resistance. It is because in this device, the resistance between two terminal respectively collector and emitter is changed by changing the base voltage that is it transfers the resistance between emitter and collector therefore it is called a transistor and secondly it is called a bipolar device because in a transistor that is in a bjd transistor the current is due to electrons and holes this is very important that is the current in the bjt is due to electrons and holes hence it is a bipolar there are two poles one is the one pole refers to the electrons and the second pole refers to the holes and the holes are positive charge it is called a bipolar device because its working is due to both the majority and minority carriers if we take an npn transistor then the current is contributed by both majority electrons and minority holes in the current region and we will see this fact in the transistor operation. Therefore, up till now, the transistor, the BJD transistor is called a bipolar device because in it, the current flows due to electrons and holes. We will have the working of the majority and minority both in the bipolar junction transistor. However, in, an, in a FET, in the field effect transistor, the current is due to either electrons or holes. This is the difference. That is, in FET, the current is either only due to electrons or only due to holes, but not both. In BJT, the current is a result of both activities of electrons and holes. In FET, the current is only due to either the flow of electrons or the movement of holes. Hence, the FET, it is a unipolar device. So in this slide, we have discussed why a BJT transistor is called a bipolar and why it is called a transistor. The word transistor is a short form of transfer of resistance. We transfer the resistance from the base to, the, uh, to that of the collector. And it is called a bipolar because the current activity, the current activity is due to the contribution of electron and holes. And in contrast, in, an, in a FET, the current is either due to electrons or holes. Now we come to the second section. This is the transistor construction. In this slide, we will discuss the physical construction of the transistor. And, and here we mean the BJT transistor construction. Now, the transistor is a three-layer semiconductor device consisting of either two N and one P-type layers or two P and one N-type layers of material. And in the two diagrams above, we see the two uh, popular BJT transistor. First is called the NPN because it has two N-type materials and in between them there is one P-type material. And the second diagram shows another BJT transistor with two P-type materials and in between there is only one N-type material. The first diagram is that of the NPN transistor 
and the second diagram is that of the PNP transistor. NPN and PNP. The, the name title NPN represents the layer construction. That is, in NPN transistor, we have two layers of N-type material and one layer of P-type material. Whereas in PNP transistor, we have two layers of P-type material and one layer of N-type material. Now, in electronic schematics, the NPN and the PNP have two different representations. They have two different symbolic representation. Therefore, in the diagram shown below, we see the first diagram of NPN transistor. It is the symbolic diagram of NPN transistor. It has three, uh, it has three terminals, the collector terminal, the base terminal, and the emitter terminal. We can refer the symbolic representation to the physical layer diagram by comparing that in the physical layer diagram, there are also three terminals, the collector terminal, the base terminal, and the emitter terminal. Our symbolic representation also includes these three terminals, the collector, the base, and the emitter. However, the emitter always has an arrow adjacent to the adjacent to the terminal so the emitter is always represented by the arrow symbol then the base is always connected to the straight line this is always the connection terminal for the base this is reserved for the base and the remaining terminal represents the collector so either if we look at the npn transistor or if you look at the PNP transistor, both symbolic representation have three terminals, the collector, the base and the emitter. The emitter in both cases is represented by the help of an arrow here or over here. And the straight line always represents the base, whereas the remaining terminal is left for the collector. It's, it is left for the collector. To make the two symbols different, the direction of the arrow will play an important role. If the arrow is pointing outside, then we are discussing, then we are representing an NPN transistor. If the arrow is pointing outside, then we are representing an NPN transistor. And if the arrow is pointing inside towards the base, then we are representing a PNP transistor. So if the arrow is pointing outside or it is pointing away from the base, then it represents an NPN transistor. And if the arrow points towards the base, then it represents the PNP transistor. Excuse me, sir. I have a question. Uh, yes, ask, please. Sir, is it necessary for the base to be in the middle of collector and emitter? Um, this is the symbolic representation. So to avoid any confusion, we use the common symbols. So the answer to your question is that yes, it is compulsory to represent the base in the middle. We cannot interchange the terminals with each other. So the answer is yes, it is essential that the base will be in the middle and the terminal which has the arrow represents the emitter whereas the third remaining terminal represents the collector, either NPN or PNP transistor. So it, it is also in the middle in real transistors? Uh, in, in real life transistors, it can be in the middle, but uh, the true location is determined by looking at the data sheet provided by the manufacturer of the particular transistor. So before working with any transistor, we must look at the data sheet provided by the manufacturer. They are easily available in PDF format uh, on the internet. And from that information, we will come to know which terminal represents the collector, which terminal represents the base, and which terminal represents the emitter. We also have standard uh, packing these standard packing have predefined terminals. So the manufacturers are bound 
if, if they are using some standard packing, then they are bound to use the terminals as defined by the standard. But I would recommend that before using any transistor, we look at the transistor data sheet and then get to know which terminal represents which connector, either the connect, either the collector, either or the base or the emitter. OK. Yes, sir. OK, so now we will come to the next slide. Now in transistors, although we have learned that transistors, they have three terminals, the collector, the base and the emitter, but um, the collector and the base are emitter are not always written in their full with their full name. That is, we will use shortcut names for the collector. We will use shortcut name for the base and for the emitter. That is, terminals have been indicated by capital letters E for emitter, C for collector and B for the base. So in transistors, we will reserve the letter C for the collector and we will reserve the letter B for the base and we will reserve the letter E for the emitter. So there is no need to write the whole word collector to represent the collector terminal. Just write, writing the letter C is enough, either for NPN case or for the PNP case. And in, the, in this symbolic diagram, we see that uh, even if we change the rotation of our transistor, it is very easy to understand that which terminal is the emitter because the arrow represents the emitter terminal and the line between our straight layer represents the base and the remaining terminal is the collector terminal. So E for the emitter, B for the base and C for the collector terminal. Either NPN or PNP case. Now another important thing to remember from this diagram is that the arrow also indicates the direction of the current exiting the transistor. That is the arrow also shows the direction of current that will exit our transistor. That is, that is if we look at the NPN transistor, the arrow is pointing out of the base towards the emitter. This shows that the current will flow from the base to the emitter and and the collector current will flow from the collector to the emitter so in this diagram in the npn diagram the arrow also shows the direction of base emitter current and collector emitter current that is the arrow shows that the current that enters the base and exit through the emitter will follow the direction of the arrow shown. This current is called the base current represented by IB. And then a second current that starts from the collector and it exits from the emitter. It is called our collector current represented by IC. And if we look at the PNP transistor, then the arrow again, it shows the direction of current that will flow through the base and the direction of current that will flow through the collector. That is the base current will start from the emitter and it will flow out of the base. It is called the base current. Again, represented by IB and then a second current that starts from the emitter and it flows out of the collector. It is called the collector current represented by IC. So we can look at the importance of the arrow represented at the emitter terminal. Uh, OK, students, I will finish this class over here and we will uh, meet in a, a new lecture. Thank you very much.